now we are going on to the next feeling when we are talking of harmony in the family. So I won't go through this. We have just been through this, the four statements um, regarding relationship and the nine feelings regarding the feelings in relationship. So if anybody has any question or um, you know any doubts on this part, um, what I'll do is I will lower all the hands first. And uh, so if anybody has any uh, question on this particular slide, we can take it up. Shashikanji. Yes, uh, this is Shashikan Gosavi. Ji. I wanted to know about how should I recognize uh, trust in others or otherwise I can also say that how can I display or make others recognize that I am trustworthy for them. Thank yeah. You. So actually I didn't want to take up trust right now. We wanted to move on to respect, but just very oh, brief. No, you can please. take it to respect also in a similar way. Yeah, very briefly. The, uh, you know, the focus should be on ensuring the feeling within myself, not trying to make the other person see my feeling. The focus should first be, do I have the right feeling in myself? So when I have the right feeling in myself, when I interact with the other person, I will express that. I will share that feeling that is there within me naturally. And most often you will find that the other is able to see this. The other is able to recognize this. So we don't have to try to make the other person see. We have to just ensure the feeling within ourselves. Is that OK? Uh, when we are speaking regarding the respect in family, uh, I may be expecting respect from my son. Uh, maybe uh, I'll be uh, displaying respect towards my mother. So in both the cases, um, whether this respect feeling that I am expressing is right or wrong, and is it continuous? is something which is uh, difficult to judge. That is yeah. my question. Any feeling that we have, as long as I have the feeling, you know, right now, I can express it. Next moment, if I have, uh, you know, a feeling of mistrust or if I have a feeling of um, disrespect, then I will not express it. So can I express it? Yes, definitely. Do we have the potential to express it? Definitely. So we can express it, provided we have ensured the feeling within us. So the, that's why the whole point is focusing on ensuring the feeling within us. Now, it's okay to expect the feeling of trust, the feeling of respect, or any of these nine feelings from the other person. There's no problem there. The problem comes when I am depending on my happiness, you know, depending on them to give me this feeling for my happiness. There is the problem. So once I am able to see that I, when I ensure the feeling within myself, I am comfortable. I am happy. Then I'm not trying to get the feeling from the other. Rather, I am helping the other person. Does that make sense? Yeah, but then uh, what are the symptoms or what are the indications yeah let us go through respect a little bit then we can okay. see okay. if it's still not clear yeah thank you ma'am thank you i think gita ji will come back to you later let's just move a little bit forward so if we look at respect we have been through this um you know in the five day online workshop also we spoke of respect being the right evaluation. And if we look at the right evaluation of the human being, then you know, we've been talking about 
intention and competence. We saw this in harmony in the cell. So there is the intention, which is the natural acceptance that is similar in all. And then there is the competence, which will vary from person to person to person. So when we are rightly evaluating, we'll be evaluating the competence. So any questions on this particular slide? Gita ji, did you have a question? Didi, namaste Didi, but it was related to Sanskar. Oh, and then we'll take it some other time. Okay, Don't want okay. To get into that right now. We'll just uh, stay with the topic for now. So if there's any question on respect is right evaluation, we can um, take it up. Otherwise, um, we'll go forward. Okay. So now if we are doing the right evaluation, then, you know, we'll be looking at both intention as well as competence. A lot of times what happens is we miss one or the other, but we need to look at both. Now, a lot of times we are not really rightly evaluating. And whenever we are not rightly evaluating, we are doing one of these three things. Either we are over evaluating, under evaluating or otherwise evaluating. So this, uh, you know, we have discussed this several times in the workshops also. So whenever we are over, under or otherwise evaluating, that is disrespect. We've said that, right? And this is not naturally acceptable to any of us. Are we able to see this? Is there any doubt in this? You can raise your hand if there's, uh, if you'd like to say something. Ji, Sumati ji. Uh, ji. Ji, namaste Didi. Namaste. Uh, Didi, uh, kindly uh, enlight uh, some examples for otherwise evaluation, Didi. Yeah. Thank you, Didi. Yes. So, um, over and under evaluation is correct. I'll, I mean, is clear. I'll just mention it briefly. So, whenever we are evaluating something for more than what it is, it is over evaluation. So, you know, a child does well in school and we say, oh, wonderful, the best child in the whole world and so on. So we are over evaluating. We can talk about, yes, the child did well in school, but is the best child and the most brilliant in the whole world and all that would be over evaluating. Similarly, under evaluating, when you are evaluating less for less than what some something is. So, uh, the same child that we were over evaluating, one day the child comes home with less marks and we get very upset and we say this fellow is useless, is no good. So obviously we are under evaluating. It can't be useless, can't be no good, was doing so well, may not have done so well this time, but won't, you know, it's not that he can't do anything. Similarly, when we Evaluate for other than what it is. So whatever is the reality, we are not seeing that and we are evaluating as something else. That would be an otherwise evaluation. The commonest example of this is we as human beings are um, a coexistence of self and body. But we often otherwise evaluate ourselves and others as the body. So we see ourselves as the body in living, at least in habit, we can see that we often do things as if we are the body. And similarly, we evaluate others also as if we are the body. So in living, a lot of times we are making this mistake. We are doing this otherwise evaluation. Does that uh, help as an example? Uh, yes, Didi, Didi that uh, we have to look at it as a self not a body, isn't it? 
we have to see both both as both, as okay. a human being we are a, you know we have to see the yes, reality yes, the way it is yes please so any reality that we don't see the way it is then it becomes an otherwise evaluation isn't it because okay, we evaluate okay, it differently okay didi thank you didi thank you we have a couple more hands raised now uh shashikant ji ji uh, the appraisal of uh, mere expression in words about respect or disrespect uh will it will it be appropriate in terms of uh, its validation as a respect yeah so any word any language that is used to express a certain feeling can only point it out to you but we call it feeling because we feel it we are able to experience that so only when i have that feeling within me i am able to experience that feeling within me can i say for sure that yes i know what this feeling is otherwise i have information about it through the word through the expression through language uh but i may or may not have understood understanding means i should be able to know that for myself so that will be possible only when i have that feeling within me i am able to see that for myself does that answer the question yeah most often we say that mere expression in words is not adequate it should be yes. seen through the actions yes true so yeah yeah sure this when we have the right feeling then because of that feeling the in accordance with that feeling we have thoughts and in accordance with those thoughts we have the behavior outside therefore it flows but when we are trying to do things outside and what we are doing is not matching our feeling then we get that hint of you know everybody is able to get that that just mere actions will not do it there should be the right feeling also somewhere we are able to get a sense of that yes thank you ma'am thank you very much thank you So I think we'll move forward. We've done a couple of questions now. Check for yourself in every interaction with others whether you are having respect or disrespect. It is is it right evaluation you are doing or over under or otherwise evaluation? Can we have that uh, um, reflection, Bhaiya? Ji. Whenever the evaluation is not right. it is disrespect do you think so too or not you can answer that and meanwhile while everybody is answering we can take one more question dr sunil kumar yeah thank you so uh, with regard to otherwise evaluation i would like to uh, tell about an example yeah that's it mm-hmm. usually we recognize people so their uh, dress right dress code For example, a policeman, a doctor, a nurse—they have their own uniform. But when somebody pretends to be a policeman and uh, wears the uniform of a policeman, we may the the common man may think that he is a policeman. Can we recognize this as an example for otherwise evaluation? What do you think? Um, that is a uh, an expression, really. um if we really look at respect then we will get into that yeah. is respect going to be on the basis of i mean what are we evaluating right are we yeah. evaluating the self are we evaluating the body what are we evaluating so like we were talking about in the previous slide when we see the self we see the the natural acceptance part is similar in all the differences are only in the the competence when we talked of trust we talked of the intention which is similar in all now when we are talking of respect we will come to that in a while that we are evaluating the competence so 
um, you know, uh, we'll get into that a little more, a uh, little later. But basically, we are talking of um, the competence part in the self. Okay, thank you. Ji. Um, so in this um, self-reflection, we are mostly able to see majority of us that yes, this is disrespect. So what's the problem if we disrespect? What is the big issue there? So this also we are familiar with these slides from the five day online. Whenever we over evaluate, we are evaluating for more than what something is, there is a possibility of us going into ego, ahankar, what we say. Similarly, whenever we are under or otherwise evaluating either ourselves or others, there is a possibility of having lower self-esteem and going into depression. And we can keep going round and round in these circles of, uh, you know, ego and depression all the while. So we can check for ourselves, you know, how many times in a day do we go into the ego part? That means how many times in a day we are over-evaluating ourselves? Or how many times a day are we you know, when we say feeling low, what is that feeling low? How many times we are under-evaluating? So, for instance, you know, a lot of times, even though we may not be expressing it, something may be going on within the imagination. Are we, in our imagination at least, appreciating others? Or are we criticizing others? This one is like that, that one is like that. This one is not doing this right. That one is not doing that right. Sometimes, a lot of times we express also, right? We keep complaining about others. So if we look at, you know, when we are complaining about others, what are we doing really? It's almost like saying, I am better than them. I don't do like this. So I am strengthening my ego there. I was already over-evaluating and each time I keep talking about it, I keep saying it again and again, I keep thinking about it, I am sort of uh, making it more, uh, I'm making that groove deeper and deeper. I'm strengthening the ego. So these are things that now we can start looking at. Everything has to be looked at within ourselves. It's one thing to try to understand logically, try to get the information. But until and unless we start seeing these things within ourselves, it will not be really that we have understood. The, the, to be able to say that I have understood, it should start showing up in my living. Otherwise, it is not become right understanding for me. So um, basically, whenever we are thinking of others, looking at others, are we looking at the similarity or are we focusing on the dissimilarity? And if we are focusing on the dissimilarity, we are not seeing, we are, you know, either over, under or otherwise evaluating, then what is the solution? So the solution is to do the right evaluation. When we do the right evaluation, then we have the self-confidence, then no matter what somebody says, somebody is, may praise me to the skies, I am still very much with my feet on the ground because I can see that, you know, I have evaluated myself correctly. And no matter what the other person may praise and all, I don't go into ego. I am confident of my right evaluation. Similarly, if somebody, you know, throws brickbats at me, uh, finds fault with everything that I do, still I don't go into depression because I have the <coughs> right evaluation of myself. So now my I am not dependent on the outside for my evaluation. And therefore, I don't succumb to things like peer pressure. 
and so on. So maybe we can uh, take one more question. Nachiketa ji. Ajay, namaskar ji. Namaste. Uh, actually, this uh, implication of over evaluation is ego or implication of over evaluation is depression or both of them? Yeah, so when I over evaluate myself, I may go into ego. If I over evaluate somebody else, they might go into ego. If I under evaluate or otherwise evaluate myself, I may lower my own self esteem and at some point I may go into depression. If I under evaluate or otherwise evaluate somebody else, the same thing may happen to them. They might have lower self esteem, they might go into depression. So when we keep telling the children that you know, you're good for nothing, you can't do anything right. Some, at some point they start believing that yes, I am good for nothing. I can't do anything right. What's the point of living? Why should I go on? And things and, like that. Uh, and what will be the implication of otherwise evaluation? Similar. Because we are not evaluating them correctly. Anything, anywhere where the evaluation is not the right evaluation is going to lead to disrespect. Anything that is disrespect is not naturally acceptable to us. So what is naturally acceptable to us? This right evaluation, that is what is naturally acceptable to us. Even when somebody over evaluates us, do we feel comfortable or uncomfortable? What do you think? Uh, actually, I should put it like this, madam, whether I am right or wrong, you will just say. So when we are either over evaluating or under evaluating or otherwise evaluating, uh, we are wrong, wrongly evaluating. And exactly. when we are, uh, and when we are wrongly evaluating, we will go, we will suffer a cycle, cycle of ego and depression. That means sometimes we will be at a very higher uh, state. That is what I can call ego, and uh, I can also go to the other extreme, that is depression. So I will be subjected to this ego depression cycle. If I will be under wrongly evaluating, so I think uh, you know, that will be uh, more correct probably. This is what we are saying, isn't it? <laughs> that whenever we are not rightly evaluating, we are either, either over, under or otherwise evaluating. And whenever we do that, this is not naturally acceptable to us. And this is a form of disrespect. Isn't it? This is what we were saying. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so we'll move forward. So what is the solution? Solution is right evaluation. When we do the right evaluation, we have the self-confidence. We are not swayed away by whatever somebody else thinks or says or does or, you know, we, we our remote control is with us. It is not handed over to somebody else. Somebody else doesn't decide how I behave, what clothes I wear, how I dress up and so on and everything. So now how to do the right evaluation? So we come back to that question. You know, we said human being is a coexistence of self and body. Now, should the right evaluation be on the basis of the self? Or should it be on the basis of the body? So we can have that reflection here, Bhaiya. Ji. So we can answer this uh, reflection. Will the right evaluation be on the basis of self or body? And meanwhile, if uh, anybody else has any questions, we can take them up. Gita Ji is there. Didi, just a minute, I will fill up the poll. And ah, then... Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Didi, again, I am right from the morning, I am sticking on to Sanskar Didi. But here, Didi, if, if because of my over evaluation, if my ego is strengthened, 
so that will become my sanskar ego will be my sanskar am i correct didi well what happens is whenever there is some preconditioning mm. we go through it again and again and again when uh. it becomes a habit uh. that has become my sanskar now okay so somebody okay. praises me i go into ego this moment mm. now after uh, uh, you know next moment somebody else uh, sort of says something uh, which is rude or unkind i go into i i feel low my mm. self esteem goes down yeah. now this is happening different ways yeah. uh-huh. supposing i take somebody else's over evaluation as right for me suppose mm. Mm-hmm. i start believing somebody mm. said something you know praising me tremendously i start believing that mm. now i go into ego at this moment mm. but if i continue with this again and again and again and again it becomes my sanskar mm-hmm. then i don't even think about it it just comes like you know i without thinking also i am constantly thinking i am superior than everybody else mm. so you see that complaining becomes a sanskar mm 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 so i'm constantly complaining and mm. i don't see anything wrong in it i am mm. saying i am fine the problem is with them they are not mm. good enough this is not good that is not good all that i keep complaining mm. Mm. because now it is my sanskar mm. mm. that makes sense okay yes did i got it did you did similarly uh, short temper laziness being yes. hygiene everything will become our sanskar yes if we don't pay attention and we keep mm. repeatedly doing the same things thinking the same way doing the same things all of this becomes a sanskar mm mm-hmm. yes okay thank you didi got thank it clear so when we are talking of right evaluation i think we are, um, this is very clear that most of us majority vast majority of us can see that the right evaluation has to be on the basis of the self the body keeps changing the body can be you know varied all that and when we are talking of right evaluation at the level of the self then these three things we've talked about purpose program potential uh reflection bhaiya Prichit Bhaiya, we have another reflection here. Yeah, Didi, we have reflection on the end of this slide. Okay, okay, fine. So, we've discussed this earlier in uh, the five-day online also. So, we can see on these three points, purpose, program, potential. If we look at our purpose, we all want to live with happiness. We all want to live with prosperity. and we want it all the time so this is our natural acceptance we can see that for ourselves we can see that for others so now we can see that this is something that is same for all so our purpose is the same so when we want to live with happiness how to go about doing that so we need to have the right understanding we need to understand the harmony at all the levels that we live in and we need to live with harmony so that is how i would go about it that is my program that is how anybody else will also need to go about it will need to understand live in harmony so that they can have continuous happiness so our program is also the same then if we look at our potential do we have the potential to achieve this certainly we have if we see you know we already said that the natural acceptance is there in all of us if we you see we all have this imagination going on continuously in us desires thoughts expectations they are going on 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 all the time continuously so we all have this potential so our purpose program potential is all similar now if all of these are similar if we see from you know at the level of the self then 
the other is just like me the other is similar to me so at least that much we should have as the content of respect when we are trying to see what is the right evaluation at least this much we should be able to see that every other person is similar to me at the level of the self g can we have the uh, reflection bhaiya so can we see this that the other is similar to me and if anybody has any questions regarding this slide we can take up the question also you can raise your hand ji sumati ji ha ji namaste didi namaste didi namaste uh, uh, didi uh, you say that the other is similar to me isn't it didi mm -hmm. but uh, why we are giving respect to some persons and we are not giving the same respect to all the other persons mm -hmm. so that we have to vary from uh the we are giving respect not we are not giving respect to uh, evenly to all the persons yes. only a certain person we are giving respect and we are not giving respect to the other person yes. even though they are elder than us why the differentiation comes didi yes so some of this will be discussed in a lot more detail in the next session where there is more talk on differentiation but we'll certainly talk about it a little bit here yes. that you know when we are not seeing at the level of the self if i am not seeing my we just talked of this you know otherwise evaluation we end up otherwise evaluation as evaluating ourselves we end up otherwise evaluating others when we otherwise evaluate and think that we are the body we also think that the other is also the body now if you look at the body do you see the similarity in all of us or do you see differences what do you see uh, if we take as a body means all are same only how some people have small body some people have big bodies oh, like the have... appearance here yeah. we have seen didi yes. yes as appearance appearance very some will be tall some will be short yeah. fat exactly. slim like that is yes, didi somebody is aged somebody is young somebody is fat uh, yes, somebody is yes, you know, thin so many changes yes, so many different yes, uh, physically yeah. different um, yes so if you are looking at the physical aspect there will be lot of differences and because we are so used to seeing with the gross eyes so with the gross eyes we see these differences so we think that we are all different and sometimes we think that you know we have so many preconditioning so many wrong assumptions so we may have this assumption that somebody who is well dressed is uh, demands higher respect so we end up giving respect to somebody who is well dressed same time we see somebody who is uh, wearing you know uh, tattered clothes we don't give them respect uh -huh. but now we have to start looking at the self we have to start seeing these three things purpose program potential do we all have these three things yes so on the basis of the self whether the person is well dressed in you know tie and suit or whether the person is wearing torn clothes they are all similar to me at the level of the self so seeing that similarity that should be that minimum content of respect so whatever is you know i have a um, uh, uh, you know expectation of respect from the others the others also have the expectation of respect from me yes, i have yes. a natural acceptance for the feeling of respect the other also has a natural acceptance for the feeling of respect so i should be able to see that similarity at the level of the self does that make make it clear uh, yes didi thank you didi thank you so we'll go forward so while there are similarities at the level of the self we've been talking about that 
are we really accepting the other as being similar to us or are we trying to show that we are special we are unique we are different so simple things like a child wants to have a birthday party we want to go to an exclusive restaurant we want to go to an exclusive park an exclusive location these days for weddings also so much extravagant expense going to more and more exotic locations so what are we trying to do are we trying to see ourselves as similar to others or are we trying to be something different are we trying to focus on being special something more unique than the others so this we have to see isn't it where is our focus so any observations on this any questions we have uh... didi i have a doubt didi uh, namaste didi uh, didi suppose, suppose if i have a status uh, whether i have to uh, show that status that is whether i have to uh, uh, give all the affordable uh, to my kid or i have to Uh, give only the uh, correct physical facility to my kid because my kid sometimes if i give all the affordability means uh, she will be very happy so we we are trying to keep our child happy only but uh, whether i have to spend more money for the happiness of, of my child or i should um, restrict uh, the Uh, amount of spending to my child because uh, she is the happiness is my the child hap yes didi is the physical facility going to lead to her happiness uh, are we sure about that certainly not certainly but in some cases of extent uh, like if if it is a birthday party means um, my child will expect all, so all, uh, all the ceremonies like Uh, cake cutting and going to a hotel and a temple so that child is expecting all the um, extent of happiness in, in its life so i have okay, to let me ask you this let me ask you this when the child was small was the child expecting this or did we <laughs> get the child into this habit how did it no, happen really, but uh, when the child is very small so if we go to other parties means the child looking no didi so the child expecting the same from ourselves also so whether we have to afford all the um, thing what the child expects or we have to restrict didi so see still doubt in the parenting yeah so if we have the right understanding we'll be able to see that physical facility may cause some excitement may lead to some temporary happiness but how long will it last that you have to see are you able to see that only does it last for a certain time no didi only for doesn't a last doesn't last so now today you do this there is some short lived happiness for for one hour two hours sometimes not even that tomorrow everything is washed out forgotten next day again we are looking for happiness we are searching for happiness isn't it yes didi so where will you put an end to it there is no end there is no end so what's the point so we think we are doing it for the children's happiness but really you know it is also possible that it may lead to a lot of unhappiness because till the time the child got uh, you know till the child till the time the child was not aware of these hotels and this kind of functions and this and that the child was very happy with mm -hmm. us but a lot of times what happened is you know we were busy at work or something else and perhaps um, we felt guilty that we are not spending time with the child so we may have, i'm not saying specifically for you i'm just saying in general so we may yes, have got yes. toys gifts and so on for the child now the child starts associating our coming home with gifts and toys earlier the child was happy just that we came home the child would just come and hug us but now oh. the child starts looking 
what have you brought for me expect we come home. for a gift because now we got the child used to the toys the gifts and so on and that thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then we don't know where to stop it all isn't it yes baby okay baby thank you baby thank you um swapan ji uh, namaste didi namaste uh, this sanskar of this a very sometimes like this ego that i am special is an observe not able to hear you properly there is some disturbance in the voice okay now now it's okay um uh, better okay so in about this say something i'm not able to hear i think we lost the connection um namaste didi namaste ji ji uh, didi about uh, this differentiation if we see didi then our entire education system is uh, aimed at training students to stand out for example didi i teach in an mba college and over and over again what we try to educate and tell the students especially during placement season is how they should stand out so that in this huge big competition those few jobs which are available they are able to get so didi how to reconcile between this ground reality and uh, the truth of what we are studying in uhv yeah so we have to you know slowly switch over to what we can see is right right now we can see lot of things may have gone wrong in society in the systems that we have set up and this has not happened just overnight it has happened over time isn't it so now we have to start working on changing things back to a better state and again it's not going to happen very quickly it's not going to happen overnight but as we make more and more effort together we'll be able to see that things start changing outside to begin with at least when we work on ourselves we are able to see that we become more peaceful we become calm we become happier we are able to understand things better and then as we start expanding that circle of you know our influence then we are slowly able to influence others they are able to see the changes in our behavior then they also want to see what we are doing how we are so calm how we are so much you know comfortable and slowly you know that circle gets bigger and bigger you can see it even with uhv to begin with there was hardly anybody and now look at it it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger it's in so many universities every day there are you know the five day online workshops are going on 78 some workshops have already happened so many things are happening thousand thousand people in one workshop are going through this at least they are getting exposed to it they may or may not you know be able to understand it fully but at least that exposure is there that opportunity is there so slowly things will change and as you know the circle of influence gets bigger not just the engineering colleges but you know people who come out from this who go into leadership roles tomorrow they can make these changes happen so it's not that far fetched also but of course in the transition phase there will be a lot of upheavals up and down and uh, we need to be prepared for that and at least within us we can be comfortable because we you know are ensuring our feelings within us then we are able to be calm be comfortable be happy and with that then we you know we all have that responsibility we need to all have that commitment to change the society because we are the ones who are forming the society so we start with ourselves but then we have to work towards changing things for everybody isn't it ji didi thank you 
थैंक यू दीदी थैंक यू so uh, maybe we'll take one more question we have time still so we can take one more question and then go further um moment um uh, take somebody who has not yet uh, contributed to the conversation yes madam namaste madam namaste namaste yeah madam it is thank you for the opportunity to share my views it is regarding what just now and ma'am spoke about the uh, placements of the mba students regarding that madam mm -hmm. okay. so in the class uh, it may be irony but it is a reality in the class when you take we tell the students to keep your mouth shut be silent and we are having a class mm -hmm. when they are in doing some work we tell them you be silent when See, there lot are of problems campus, are there lots of problems when, are there uh, Let's madam not just, focus just, on just the problem. no no just just yeah. few seconds madam yeah. so like this wherever you see the students the time he or she is spending in the campus we are telling him or her to keep quiet and do as per the instructions given now when it comes to the placement interview you are telling them you speak mm -hmm. out otherwise you will not be selected okay yeah. so where the opportunity has been given to the students to think explore and put for their proposals and go accordingly so there we lack we do not give the opportunity to think them to explore their views to share their views and go ahead so i believe that a considerable amount of time and effort should be given so that they'll open up and they'll try to think in a different way in the sense that they will have that uh, a uh, feeling of the what you call this the living in harmony or the the other is also like me or the uh, this uh, like me also others are there so those type of uh, uh, some sort of a belongingness will be there and they'll try to contribute more in the to the institutions and so to the society when they pass out who so do you what, propose should be yes yes next time coming to that madam so yeah. the the environment where the ecosystem where we are molding the students that as an we should try to provide from our side so let Who us start me? yeah Who it is starting me? from us only as an individual yes. so yes. one by one if we start i'll start someone will start next someone will start because these things are contagious one is affecting by the others if you find one good automatically it will be spread okay in yes. that class that madam is so she is very practical she tells things means naturally that feeling will come with the other members or other fac co faculty members they will also try to do it and in the way will try to create a conducive ecosystem because of which yeah the see all these can be words yeah. all these are expressions and words what yeah. are we doing on the ground yes ground so reality we, we have, have to start work. from our end yeah we have yes. to start as an yes. individual you have to start the take the first Absolutely. step from our side only that's what i want to add up in here yes yes because if we see when we are saying students are like this we are still looking outside yes absolutely right we are right. still finding yeah. fault outside yes yes so we need to focus shift focus inside yes work on ourselves yes ma'am and with that help change things around yes yes thank yes. thank you sharmila ji for giving thank the opportunity you. to share my views thank you so much thank you okay we'll um, just go there's just a couple more things that you know we can restate because this is important that this you know what we are saying is the minimum content of respect that the other is similar to me this we need to see at the level of the self that our purpose program potential is similar to the other it is the same as that of the other so the other is like me that if we see at the level of the self then we will see that uh, respect is something that is naturally acceptable to all just like how it is naturally acceptable to me it is also naturally acceptable to everybody regardless of whether they have more physical facility or they have less physical facility whether they are fair skinned or dark skinned whether they are you know tall or short and so many other things so many other possibilities um whether they are of one um kind of uh, ideology or another kind of ideology 
So these desires, thoughts, and expectations are continuously going on in all of us. And they are there. The content of this desire, thought, expectation may be different for different people. What I am imagining may be different from what you or somebody else is imagining. But should that come in the way of my having a feeling of respect for the other? Certainly not. Because we can see that at the level of the natural acceptance, when we look at the level of the self, we can see that our purpose is the same. Our program is the same. We all have the potential. We may not have reached that potential. We may be at different levels of reaching that potential. But certainly, the potential is the same. The ultimate potential is there. And it is the same for all of us. So therefore, we can see the similarity. And therefore, this should be the minimum content of respect. So with that, if there are any questions, we'll take those. Uh, Shashikala ji is there. Shashikala ji. Deepa ji. Yes, ma'am. Actually, with respect to this, Dadar is similar to me. This is the very important concept we all need to uh, practice, especially with respect to the students. When we ask them to uh, uh, show their performance, especially with respect to this placement interviews and all, we need to ask them uh, to get excel in the things, not to uh, behave in a different manner. You have to show the excellence and not to be competent. I think that way we will be able to, uh, we can ask them to behave in a better manner. No to behave differently that to, uh, like in the sense uh, they need to show them uh, sh uh, during the placement interviews, they have to show their excellence. That way we can tell them. Uh, yes. Otherwise that concept is different rather than saying that I am different from the other person. We all are similar. We have to accept this and we need to, especially with respect to the students, I feel like that. Yeah, I think, you know, the whole um, trend in society has gone a certain way. So it will take time for things to, uh, you know, come in the right direction. But till then, we don't have to go along with the way things are. We can see lots of alternatives also. So there can be many, many ways of uh, you know making a living uh, need not necessarily be that we have to compete and have cutthroat com competition and then get there we can see the similarity in the others and yet excel like you're saying so that part is true um, for us you know whenever we are looking outside when we are looking at students we are looking at how things are, how bad the situation is. Every time we do that, we should also try to remind ourselves that what am I doing to help in this situation? If I am not helping, if I am not part of the solution, then I am also part of the problem because I am forming that society. So I have to start seeing that. And I can so also help others if I feel this. The other person is similar to me. Then only I can stand in his shoes and I can think about the situation and I can correct. find a solution. Correct, correct, correct. True. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Binayji. Uh, uh, namaste. Namaste. Uh, I was just trying to understand uh, whether the two uh, feelings which we have seen, that is trust and respect, are they interlinked to each other? And if it yes. is uh, interlinked to each other, how do we express it? How do we explain that? Yeah. So if you see, we said that trust is the foundation value without which the relationship cannot go forward. This is because, you know, until and unless we have, until and unless we have trust on the intention, maybe somebody's mic is on, we can mute that. Until and unless we have trust on intention of the other, we you know, cannot have 
that relationship. We don't see the relationship with the other. So to start with, we have to have trust on intention. Now, once we have trust on intention, that we can see is the same for all. Then we'll be also able to see that though we have the same similar intention, we are all similar at the level of intention, competence-wise, there are differences that we are able to see. Now, when we look at the competence, then we need to evaluate the competence correctly. How do we evaluate the competence correctly? Only when we evaluate that competence correctly, we make the right evaluation. Then we see that you know, this feeling of respect is there for everybody. So trust and respect, these two feelings, we can ensure in ourselves for everyone. Because one, you know, when we look at the intention, the intention is this similar in all of us. Our natural acceptance is similar in all of us. When we look at the competence, the competence varies, but this purpose, program, and potential, this part within all of us is similar. So that potential that we have of achieving that competence, um, you know, increasing our competence, that potential is there in all of us. And the program to do it is also similar in all of us. So the other is similar to me. So when I see that, then this feeling of respect has to be there for everyone. So basically we are looking at intention, we are looking at competence, these two things. And we are seeing that though there is, uh, you know, some difference in the competence, intention wise, we are all similar. So that, you know, trust on intention should be for all. Competence wise, we are different, but that potential for achieving that maximum competence is similar in all of us. So on that basis, the other is similar to me. And therefore, this should be the minimum content of respect. Now, coming to the difference in the competence that we will look at later, how, you know, we've been through that earlier also, we are familiar with those, um, you know, that discussion that when we see the difference in competence, we don't have to differentiate because of that. We don't have to try to be special that, oh, I have more con competence, so I have to do something differently. Rather, if I see the similarity, then I can see the difference in competence can be used to cooperate with the other, to be able to help the other. So I can be a help to the other rather than trying to be different from the other. I can see my similarity despite that difference in competence. I can use that to help the other. If I have more competence, I can help the other gain their competence. If I have less, then I can understand from the other and increase my competence. Jee, does that answer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there is some more hands raised, I think. Let us see this. Bhaiya, can you just... Uh, Maya, could you hand the mic to the next? Uh, not able to. Seems to be stuck a little. Should I ask? G G. Yeah, Aditi, this was regarding that uh, children's birthday celebration that we were discussing. Can I ask that? Yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, this happens with you know my children usually that uh, their uh, friends' birthdays are at some places like let's say some Magdis or some higher places. So we parents only leave them there, okay? Now, when it happens that, uh, you know, all their friends' birthdays are at various places, when it comes their turn, they feel that we should also arrange their birthday at such places. Now, what happens uh, to us, we have two thoughts in mind. You know, uh, at our times, we never celebrated birthdays like this because others were also not celebrating. So we did not have that. Now, we have two thoughts that when the child is asking me to do it, 
uh, you know, I am the one who uh, left him at such places. And I also do not have, uh, you know, my financial capacity also is there to arrange at such places. So we just allow or we just, you know, do it. So what I feel is um, there is a family, uh, uh, you know, family on one side and their schools and uh, the other on the other side. Now, school as such doesn't allow celebration in school. But outside, they cannot control. So if there is an education in the school regarding all this, so probably a child who's, who has most impact of, first of all, then the, I think more than that, they have an impact of friends and the school. So overall, if, uh, you know, from all the sides, if efforts are being done, and uh, even if uh, parents get counseling regarding this, you know, how to handle such situation, uh, then this can be handled. Hmm. So ultimately, we are saying it's not my responsibility. It is somebody else's responsibility. You ask the teachers, the teachers will tell you it's not my responsibility. It's the parents' responsibility. So this is referred to as passing the bug. So no, no, it's not in? passing the bug. Really. As I said, parents <laughs> need uh, some counseling. Like kind of my daughter, if she gets angry and she doesn't talk with me because of say, I say no. So how has it resulted? How has that come about? It was not the case earlier, right? Somewhere things have changed. Yeah, somewhere things have changed. Yeah, yeah. so we have to try to correct them. We have to take responsibility and try to correct those. Okay. Isn't it? Because yeah. the child may learn some things from school, but don't mm -hmm. we want to correct our relationship with our family members? So somewhere we, we have to look into ourselves. We have to see what kind of feeling we are having, where things mm -hmm. have gone wrong. We have to work on it. That is important, yeah. isn't it? Yes, that's what uh, yes. we also do some counseling. I mean, some sometimes even we don't find answers, like you know, to so exactly we also need counseling for that. Yeah, are you part of the morning sessions? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah. maybe you should join the morning sessions and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, start that process of exploration more deeply, and you might yeah. be able to get many answers. Many yes. people who have been doing explorations deeply, they are able to, you know, change many things okay. in their relationships, have better relationships with children, with parents, with mm -hmm. colleagues, and so on. Yeah. So you can certainly make an effort for that and see. Where okay, it is. sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, I will have to request somebody to pass the mic because I am not able to do it. Ah, okay. Uh, ma'am, hello. Yes, my voice audible. Yes, ma'am. Nirmala ji. Ah, yes, ji. Yes, good morning, ji. Morning. So, uh, we have to consider other similar to me, right, ma'am? That one. Uh, when we are uh, doing mistake, uh, I am doing mistake. Uh, so when they are doing harm to me, when they are uh, doing something not good to me, then I am not in a position to consider similar to. Me. That lies the problem. Uh, in all the situation, we are not able to consider uh, others uh, are similar to me. So we have to work towards that. And uh, but anyway, there is a refinement after uh, the three years of attending uh, my UHC classes. I'm able to cope up, but I need some time to realize exactly. Yeah. So there is all the time. It yes, depends on how long we want to continue with this. Yes, ma'am. The thing is, you know, we are focusing not on the self. We are focusing on the body. We are focusing on the content of the imagination that the other person thinks like that, but that is not what I think. Mm. And so we are seeing, we are focusing on the differences. Now mm. we have to start focusing on the similarity. Yes, ma'am. Now we have to start looking at the similarity in the self. And when we start doing that, when we shift our focus there, we will see a very different perspective. Definitely, definitely. Now, so we are, have, uh, that we, we have to pay attention. Uh, maturity, uh, after uh, three years, we are having right understanding. We are working towards that and exploring. And I'm um, getting a, a equal uh, response from others also. We can change, madam. Definitely, it is possible. Uh, the state yes. we are expecting will definitely come. Yes. And one more uh, request I want is uh, uh, morning sessions and Sunday sessions. Uh, uh, how to continue, ma'am? This uh, one-week program I have enrolled. 
and uh, where we have to whom we have to contact or uh, anything ma'am i want to yeah parikshitaiya uh, will be able to help you maybe uh, after this uh, thing yes ma'am yes ma'am yes. sunday sessions at least uh, weekly once uh, con continuously on all sundays i want to attend madam yeah, yeah. So that, you can uh, yeah, i'm uh, really interested in that ma'am uh, for uh, three years uh, we are working and uh, we are finding the change in the uh, students also uh, to the students level we are taking these concepts and exploring them they are also giving a, uh, there is a change in their attitude also yes. we are we are finding that exactly yeah. yeah thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you नमस्ते नमस्ते मैडम अच्छा नमस्ते आज द द द डिस्कशन इज़ ऑन ऑन बेसिस ऑफ इंटेंशन नॉट कॉम्पिटेंस अदरवाइज इफ द स्टूडेंट विल आस्क दैट दैट क्वेश्चंस द स्टूडेंट विल से यू थिंक दैट आई आई एम सिमिलर टू टू यू सो यू गेट इट आंसर्ड बाई योर so this is uh, not about the 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 uh so this is about the competence so so as, as you rightly uh, the discussion is on trust and intention so uh, this is not based on the competence so competence may vary from person to person competence varies from person uh, to person intention yeah uh, ji please yes madam competence may vary so uh, trust on intention is uh, intention is uh, the same so that 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 is my observation thank you namaste namaste swapan ji uh, namaste didi namaste to all um, i'm sorry i got disconnected uh, so just i wanted to say that um, this all what we have been discussing that these they all become our sanskars like this ego i am special i am different this sanskar has been given to us uh, when we were uh, young and this sanskar is still so deep and that even now i am teaching this course and uh, one of the my, one of my students in one of my classes he gave me the feedback sir you are very judgmental so even while teaching this course also sometimes we are feeling that we are special and we are different yeah. so that i think that deep rooted sanskar that i am special it's so deep rooted so i think uh, yes we have to work on ourselves and then obviously i have to work on my children also and my students also so that it does not become deep in them because now we are finding it so difficult we are we are trying to do our best but still that ego is visible because um, a few days back or um uh, even my son sometimes uh, he says that you have uh, quite a lot of ego and then even now i am working on myself that comment is not coming directly but then still i think they have a feeling that still i feel i am different and then i don't uh, trust them like that so this uh, i am special and other is not other is lower than me or like that so this is so deep rooted Uh, but then uh, you're right. The sanskars which we develop, like uh, these birthday parties and all, we are discussing. Uh, even my children, yes, they go for the other uh, parties. But then uh, I don't know how they have this understanding, or we may have given the, this sanskar. We have never celebrated their birthdays in any that place. So they 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 understand that. So in that way, I think. Uh, but lot of uh, other sanskars, I think I don't know what kind of sanskars I'm giving. We are giving them. all of um, now now we are in a position to evaluate that other we were uh, earlier we were not even aware of this self and all the things so it's already quite late for us but then uh, uh, i think we have to work on ourselves and then we have to work on our next generation students and children so that they don't develop these uh, sanskar that deep that we cannot they cannot work on that so this is my sharing so this ego mm -hmm. is a very deep rooted sanskar in all of us my especially in me i feel thank you didi thank you i think the very fact that we are able to see this is the first step towards moving in the other mm -hmm. direction moving in the right direction so um that is where our focus needs to be what changes i need to make in myself before i start looking at all the problems outside what changes we can do in ourselves true right right yeah 
Thank you, Nidhi. Thank you to UHV. So we are in the morning sessions also. Now we, I got to know that this refresher course is also there. So I'm at home nowadays down with Corona. So I thought it's an opportunity to learn again and again. So yeah. thank you. Thank you to all Prakshit Bhai and thank you to all, to all of you. So um, these are some of the questions um, that sometimes come up. So maybe we can respond, some of us can respond to um, some of these questions. Um, so if we look at this question, we normally respect good people, but not bad people like criminals. One person is successful on the basis of his hard work. He has done his PhD, has a good job. Another person is a loser. So how can we respect both of these people equally? How would you respond to this? Um, maybe we'll take somebody who has not spoken yet. Gulin ji. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, for this, I think uh, we can tell the students to focus on the purpose, program and potential <clears throat> of each and every individual. And uh, based on that, see the equality among all of us. And uh, then depending whether the uh, competence level is low, you know, seeing the complementarity, we can uh, learn something from the people who you, who, you know, who are clear with their values and the ones who are not able to do that, uh, maybe we can help them in some way. So yeah. that's how yeah. we answer. Yeah, so the question is, does the person who has a PhD and a good job, does that person need, uh, you know, should that person be respected more than a criminal? No, ma'am, every, every person should be respected, irrespective of uh, how he's performing in this materialistic world, because uh, we are all the same. And that is what we have learned in this, and we should be able to rightly evaluate that. Ji. Ji. Thank you. Sandhya ji. Yeah. Uh, Madam, you want me to answer for first question? Yes, you can give your uh, okay. views on that. Yeah. So uh, in organization, there are various levels are there. Someone, someone is PAD, someone is a class four employees. So, but everybody's role is equally important. So uh, I, I would like to tell the student that me as an individual person, if I'm working as a, a class four employee, but isn't it cleaning of that floor, managing small, small things at the desk of the person for whom uh, his PhD, for whom he's working, is, isn't it important? PhD person work is a different work, whereas his work is different, but both the works are equally important. And if I'm not giving, uh, if I'm assuming I'm not going to give a respect to that class four employee, uh, will as an individual, if I am at his place, at his shoes, would I would like that to happen with me? So that's a first of all, uh, a self-reflection for myself. If somebody is not talking properly to me, just because he's evaluating my work is at a lower level than him, is it right? And uh, that will help students to uh, understand that all work has got their own importance. It just the system and the society has segregated the different works at a different level in terms of uh, money. And uh, we cannot uh, evaluate respect in terms of money or a quantitative. So it's a qualitative thing and it's for human and everybody should be given a same respect. So that yeah. if you give a respect, then only- We you have to keep it brief, Sandhya ji, because uh, we may not have time for everybody. Sorry? Just keep it little brief yeah, so that uh, yeah, yeah, I are done with it. Yeah. yeah. So essentially what we are all trying to say is that you know this PhD or whatever, this can be considered in on the basis of skills. This is you know a certain skill, a uh, lot of information that we take up. But if we look at uh, you know criminals 
criminals may also be having a lot of skill of a different sort. They might be good at, uh, you know, breaking into homes and things like that. So um, both are working hard, both have different skills. But if we look at, uh, you know, uh, the self, and if we look at the similarity in the self, then we can see that the natural acceptance, like Gurleenji mentioned, you know, purpose, program, potential is similar in all of us. So at least on that basis, we should be able to see that, you know, everybody uh, has this acceptance and natural acceptance for respect. So there are some more questions, but I think uh, what we can do is uh, maybe go to the quiz and if time permits later, we can take back, uh, take another couple of questions after that. Yes. So we can go back to the questions that we were talking about on the second question. How do I ensure right evaluation? How do I know that my evaluation is right? This also sometimes they ask. I think this is, although no, no, I think it's pretty straightforward, but uh, I'm going to lower all the hands and then whoever would like to comment on this. How do I know that it is the right evaluation? Meenu Mehta ji. Didi, didi. didi, evaluation is right if it is on the basis of the self ji. and not on the basis of uh, differentiators like rich, poor, fair, dark and so on. Yes. And uh, when I do evaluation on the basis of self, the conclusion is that the other is just like me. Yes. This is how I will explain it, Didi. Yes. Especially we can mention that the purpose program potential is the same. G. Because at the level of the self, the competence can vary. G, Didi, G. Yeah. G. G. Uh, there is one more of this uh, question. I'm doing so much work at home, looking after my child. I'm working outside the home. In in spite of this, if my husband doesn't respect me, my mother-in-law doesn't respect me, won't I feel bad? How will I feel like respecting them? Now, if somebody asks you this question, how would you um, reply to this? Rachna ji? Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. I feel, uh, Didi, that respect is mutual. If other people respect you, then only you can respect them. It is not like that a person, like a woman, if a woman in the house, she is working day in and day, now, day out in the house also, and she's going out for work also, and nobody appreciates her work. Nobody gives respect to what she's doing. Then it is impossible for that person to respect others. Means like that woman is not a God that she can forget and forgive everybody. Even with, I think with natural, with the right understanding also, it is difficult to respect if her work is not appreciated and her work is not respected. Yeah. So we'll have to see, we'll have to explore and see this is, you know, am I assuming this to be true or do I know this to be true? Because you can see for yourself, if somebody is not respecting you, what are your options? So if you, you know, you expect respect from the other. Now the other person is not giving me respect. I can become unhappy. I can beg for respect. My bowl is empty because I have not ensured the feeling of respect in my, myself. Right? But it is very difficult to reciprocate that feeling when you are not getting it from the other side. Yeah, so you explore a little like more. Like if I consider myself, it is impossible for me to respect others if I'm not getting respect or even not even just respect, just appreciation of the work which I'm doing. If it is not there, like if uh, people take uh, me for granted, then it, it becomes very difficult for me to respect the other person. Yeah. So it is difficult for you to respect the other person because right now you are able to see this as doing something for somebody else. But you ask your natural acceptance, what is naturally acceptable to you? A feeling of respect or a feeling of disrespect within yourself, not getting from the other. 
what is your natural acceptance to have a feeling natural of respect or feeling of respect yes what is that yes natural acceptance is feeling of respect only yeah so your natural acceptance is for a feeling of respect but you are having you know you are not ensuring this feeling of respect when it comes to the other person because you feel they have wronged me isn't it so yeah. you don't want to have this feeling of respect within yourself but you are not yeah. able to see that it's not damaging just for them in fact it may not damage them at all what it is doing is damaging for me because yeah, i am going yeah because against i will also get affected me, yeah let me just finish this so but still i don't think i will be able to respect this? that kind that person that's just, what just i just one moment can i just finish this so if yeah. i can see that this is damaging for me that i am going against my own natural acceptance and this is causing me unhappiness do i want to continue in that state of unhappiness right now i am not able to see that this is causing me unhappiness any time i have a feeling which is not naturally acceptable to me i am unhappy i am in disharmony when i am not able to see that then you know i i feel that you know i am doing it for somebody else for so and so why should i so little more exploration uh, you can do keep it open don't okay. need to decide on it just keep okay. it open ji okay thank you thank you so uh, we have crossed our time limit uh, bhaiya should we close or do you think we should take one or more question i think we should have to close also as uh, yes. lunch time yes yeah, we can continue in the afternoon ji 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 so, so we we'll close here ji we uh, good interactive and first session we like to thanks our uh, both the resource person today mashna didi and samla didi and again like to thanks all the participant to help us to explore and as we can see questions of other can also help uh, each of us so with this we will keep exploring and keep uh, interacting in other session as well so namaste everybody namaste we will meet after the lunch break at 145 namaste ji namaste